Part two, this is going over your household information. Please list all household members information uh, for people that live with you. And as you can see, um, it does populate my social security information first. I do have to re-enter in my name and information in the top line. And then I'll go ahead and fill out uh, my date of birth and answer the questions regarding my income, race, gender, and uh, my disability or veteran status. So income, this section must be filled out. Do I have a job? Am I receiving Social Security? Um, am I receiving help from the county? So I am working, so I'll enter in yes. Number of employers. Right now I only have one employer. I'll go ahead and enter my gender. Race. Am I Hispanic? Do I have a disability? Am I a veteran? And then I will continue this information for all other members of my household. So for this example, let's say I have a wife and one child. My wife is also working. She works two jobs. And it's as simple as just clicking through the same gender, race, and veteran or disability information. I have a child also and it's important to enter in their social security number and information. There, now that that grid is complete, I can continue on to the rest of the questions in part two. Is anyone in your household currently a member or employee of the agency that you're applying? Simply reply yes or no. The next question asks, how many members of your household do not have health insurance? If you have health insurance through your employer or somewhere else, enter zero. If you do need in health insurance, please let your local agency know and enter the correct number of people who need insurance. A very important question to make sure complete is, has household members income decreased in the past three months? So this is regarding like if you have suddenly lost your job 
or if you have a dramatic uh, decrease in hours, please let us know. So for this question, I'll say yes, one of, let's say for example, my wife's jobs has cut back hours from 20 hours to five hours. And I'll enter her name. As we continue on to part two, we'll see a very important part of the application process. Maybe one of the most important. Uh, this asks what kind of income and benefits you are receiving. Please go through this list of different type of incomes and make sure mark the, the type of incomes that you are receiving. This is what, uh, proof of this information is what your local surf provider will need to determine if you're eligible for energy assistance. So as we go through the list, there's some very common ones that I will point out. Wages. Wages are the income that you receive from your job. Most people of working age receive wages. This would be your pay stubs. Uh, to complete the application, we will need the wage information and pay stub information for the last three months of anyone working, any adults working in the household. So we'll enter in that we do receive wages for both myself and my wife. Regarding which months you do need to send in with your application, there is a handy table at the bottom of the chart where you can see if we were applying uh, this application in April 2021, we will need to complete the application with our January, February, and March pay stubs. As we continue to go down the list, you could see the different type of income that you may be receiving. Rental income, unemployment compensation, diversionary work program, veterans benefits. We'll come across to the social security benefits where many people of retirement age do receive social security benefits and they will have documentation such as a social security award letter or any receipts that uh, say how much you're receiving for social security uh, per month. Make sure also if you are of retirement age, if you're receiving an IRA or pension annuity that is currently paying out to you, that you include that also in your income. Many people who apply for energy assistance may also be on the Minnesota Family Investment Program or general assistance. Please make sure mark those if you do receive that form of income. Generally, you'll receive a letter or printout from your caseworker or someone from your local county office with proof of that income. As we move on, we'll come to a section that says no proof of income required. This is regarding your child support, food support, earned income tax credit, and also if you're receiving no income, please make sure mark that box as your local agency will need to verify some information with you. This ends part two, and we will be moving on to part three.